The tire is certainly one of the most important components on a motorbike when it comes to riding dynamics. Why? Because it connects us directly to the road surface as the crucial link, providing not only the grip we need, but also the necessary stability and feedback. So how exactly is a tire built? What are the differences between them? And how do these differences actually make themselves felt when riding? We'll answer all these questions right now. So how is a tire constructed? Let's take a look here at this cross-section model. What we've got here is a front tire from Conti, the Conti Road, cut open so we can have a look at what's inside. You can clearly see how the individual components work together as a whole to produce exactly the characteristics we want from the tire. We'll talk about those in more detail later on. But first, let's take a closer look at the specific components that make up a tire. We'll start here with the bead. That's the part of the tire that sits inside the rim and basically connects the tire to the rim. Inside, it mainly consists of steel cords that are wound all the way around, ensuring that the tire cannot stretch at this point. Makes perfect sense, of course. Otherwise, there'd be a risk of the tire jumping off the rim, which you obviously don't want. So there needs to be a solid core here that doesn't stretch. And that's achieved by using these steel cords. Embedded within these steel cords begins the carcass. The carcass is essentially the foundation of the tire. It's what the entire tread and everything else are attached to. It determines not only the tire's shape, but also its stiffness and flexibility. Now you can clearly see here how the carcass starts right in the bead and then runs up over the tread all the way to the other side. The carcass itself is mainly made of textile fibers, for example, rayon, Kevlar or polyamide. These are the materials used to form and build the carcass. Depending on the tire type, a belt is then placed over the carcass. The belt serves to reinforce the tread area and to achieve certain performance characteristics. The tread itself is then vulcanized onto this belt. That's the part made of rubber compound that provides the grip you need on the road. It's also given a specific tread pattern to help disperse water and assist with how the rubber compound performs. You can imagine that when a tire is under load, this rubber compound moves slightly over the carcass, which generates heat. That heat warms up the tire, something we actually want, because it brings the rubber compound into its ideal temperature range, where it performs best. So that's the basic structure of a tire. We already mentioned earlier that there are different construction types, and now we'll take a closer look at those separately. There are radial and diagonal tires, and terms many of you will have heard before. So what's the difference between radial and diagonal tires? A radial tire is made up primarily of a carcass that's wound at 90 degrees, and that is 90 degrees at a right angle, to the direction of travel. Here we've got almost 90 degrees. It doesn't always have to be exactly 90. A few degrees more or less, up to about 5 degrees, isn't that critical in definition, but it's roughly perpendicular to the direction of travel. In contrast, a diagonal tire has its plies wound at an angle of about 45 to 25 degrees, and this creates completely different characteristics. In the case of the radial tire, we also have a belt layer added to increase strength, something you only find to a limited extent in diagonal tires. There are a few special constructions where a diagonal tire might also have a belt, but generally this belt is a feature of radial tires. So what's its purpose? Essentially, the belt sits just over the tread area. It doesn't, it doesn't extend down to the bead. And its role is to reinforce that tread section, reduce wear and influence flexibility. Over time, as motorbikes have become faster and more powerful, it's become increasingly important for the tire to maintain its shape and stability at high speeds. And that's exactly where the key difference to the diagonal tire lies. A diagonal tire like the one we've got here typically doesn't have a belt and relies purely on the carcass for stability. That's somewhat easier to achieve because the diagonal winding and the multiple layers naturally give it a bit more inherent stability. But the big drawback with this kind of tire, especially at higher speeds, is that because it lacks a belt, its diameter starts to increase as the speed goes up. So at very high speeds, um, let's say above 200 kilometers per hour, the diameter can actually increase by around two centimeters. 
Many of you who've been riding for a while will remember that back in the days when diagonal tires were the standard, they used to expand so much at high speeds that they'd actually start rubbing against the inside of the mud guard, even leaving marks in it. That was one of the reasons why manufacturers moved away from diagonal to radial tires. But that's only part of the story. The big advantage of these radial tires is that in the sidewall area, where the sidewall is noticeably softer than on a diagonal tires, because there are fewer layers, you get a very pronounced flex in this section. When you compare that directly with a radial tire, you'll notice that you can hardly twist or bend it at all. And that brings both advantages and disadvantages. The benefit of a radial tire, which offers a very good degree of flex, is that, especially on sports bikes, when you're leaning over in a corner, the tire can absorb an incredible amount of force. That's because the tire's own damping behavior is much better than that of a diagonal tire. So not only do you get more flex and better self-damping, but the contact patch of the tire in lean also increases slightly. And that, of course, has a very positive effect on grip. On top of that, as we mentioned earlier, the steel belt of a radial tire, which is wound in a longitudinal direction, adds another component that prevents the tire from deforming or expanding in diameter at high speeds. There's still a tiny bit of diameter growth, but we're only talking about a few millimeters here, something you won't actually feel when riding, and that therefore has no practical impact. That's one of the biggest advantages of radial tires, and also one of the reasons why they're now almost exclusively used, particularly on fast, high-performance motorbikes. When it comes to maximum performance, radial tires are clearly superior to diagonal ones. So now you might ask, why do diagonal tires even still exist? Well, as we mentioned before, diagonal tires are significantly stiffer in the sidewall area than radial tires. That can be a drawback, but in some situations it can actually be an advantage. For instance, if you're riding off-road, dealing with big impacts, large stones, deep ruts, then you'll definitely want a certain amount of stiffness in that area. Why? Because tires with very soft sidewalls tend to bottom out easily, and that's exactly what you want to avoid in off-road riding. In off-road conditions, you're generally not traveling at the same high speeds as you are on the road, so the increase in tire diameter at speed doesn't really matter. We can see that these tires, particularly in the sidewall section, are built much more robustly and offer more lateral stability. Even on some very heavy motorbikes, this kind of construction can be beneficial, as the inherent stiffness of the carcass design provides a certain level of built-in stability. So we've now seen that the different constructions in diagonal and radial mainly have a major effect on the stiffness and rigidity of the tire sidewall, especially in track riding, where I've been involved in tire development over the years. It was often remarkable to see how even small variations in this particular area could make huge differences in handling. We know that diagonal tires are particularly flexible in this region. And that has a clear advantage when riding at maximum lean angle. This flexibility creates a much larger contact patch. I remember a test series we did back then, a bit of an anecdote where we had tires that were completely identical except for differing stiffness in this small section. And it was fascinating how completely different they behaved in cornering radius and grip. The construction at the edge of the tire is essentially what determines how it behaves in lean when you're picking the bike up and accelerating out of the corner. The difference was almost unnoticeable, obviously, because you're moving away from that section. But at maximum lean angle, the difference in grip caused purely by sidewall stiffness was absolutely astonishing. That was a very interesting test. A whole series where we had seven or eight different tires differing only in their sidewall constructions. It was really memorable and showed very clearly what you can achieve simply by varying stiffness at that point. Another benefit of diagonal tires is that their build is fundamentally a bit simpler, which means they can be produced more cost effectively. That's why if we take a look at Conti's product range, for example, there's the well-known Conti Road, which has been around for many years. This tire is available in both diagonal and radial construction. The reasoning is to be able to offer cost-effective tires, especially when it comes to making OEM tires, original equipment tires, or tires that simply offer a very good price-to-performance ratio. As we said earlier, in certain areas of use, the diagonal tires are even superior to radial ones. 
in terms of outright performance, they aren't on the same level as a radial, especially on the road. But thanks to that price to performance balance, they're still interesting. If we look at the price difference between the Conti Road in diagonal or radial form, we can see that the diagonal tire has a price advantage of up to 30 to 35%. Just for comparison, you can get the Conti Road front tire in the size 110-70 starting from 67 euros. Let that sink in. For price conscious riders, there's a way to get very affordable tires that still work well on the road. For anyone chasing maximum performance and the rest, the radial tire is, of course, the better choice. You could go on for hours about the technology and know-how packed into a tire, but I think this gives a solid picture of what matters and where the pros and cons of radial versus diagonal tires lie. I hope I've been able to give you a brief insight into tire technology. There'll be plenty more research and tinkering in future to further improve these characteristics and there's more to come. Until then, thanks for watching. I hope we see each other next time. And for now, it's goodbye and cheerio.